We had a suggestion in the comments that I talk about situations where someone might take advantage of us. This is a heavy topic and could be very triggering to some, so a fair warning. If you aren't in a good place, you might want to watch a different video. The purpose of this video isn't all doom and gloom. It's to help raise awareness, not just for us, but especially the loved ones who look after us. I'd like to thank the members of my Patreon community for helping me come up with discussion points for this video. If you want to help shape the things that I talk about on this channel and support my ability to make these videos, there's a link down in the video description. So this first one is big and something I experienced a lot before I was diagnosed. This would be giving away money or especially our possessions when we're manic. I've given away a lot of my stuff when manic, and even depressed for that matter. Everything from jewelry to toaster ovens. It's not that the illness just magically makes me want to give away stuff, it's the burst of joy I get from making someone else happy, and in a way it feeds the mania, or distracts me from the depression. Either way, now when I'm compelled to give away something, I think twice. I really check in with myself and make sure this isn't just a means to an end. Be careful of people who ask you for money or things on a regular basis. It's easy for our manic generosity to be taken advantage of. Number two is getting assaulted or victimized often when we're symptomatic. It's really sad that people with severe mental illness are 10 times more likely to be the victims of violent crime than the average person. For those of us with psychosis, our behavior can draw attention to us in the street. We could attract the attention of sexual predators or people looking for a fight. To make it even worse, we have a harder time filing police reports or prosecuting our assailants, especially if the assault happened while we were hospitalized. I mean, who's going to believe the mentally ill person, right? It's horrible. Don't let that stop you from seeking justice, though. When it comes to assault, there's all these multifaceted areas where we can be taken advantage of. It's not a bad idea to take some self-defense classes or carry something like pepper spray. I don't have an easy solution to these problems. Just do your best to protect yourself. Now for number three, we can be taken advantage of at work. One of the ways is people having unrealistic expectations of what we're capable of. I've typically been hypomanic when starting a new job. I was able to work circles around my coworkers. I'd get so much done until the shoe dropped, until I crashed. In some jobs, like commission-based sales jobs, there was this unrelenting pressure to perform like a rock star when I wasn't well. If I didn't, people would look down on me for not keeping up. Another challenge with work is getting skipped over for promotions because of illness-related incidents or stigma. Of course, they'll never admit that's the reason why you didn't get the promotion, but sometimes it's obvious. Number four, narcissists are often drawn to our vulnerability, especially if we have a hard time setting boundaries. I don't talk a lot about narcissism on this channel because it's not my expertise and it's become such a trendy and misused word. But to give a brief summary, the narcissist has an unreasonably high sense of their own importance and uses people to feed this belief. And we, his victims, put up with their manipulative and abusive tactics until we finally recognize them for what they are. Narcissists typically lack compassion, and this can be a key that finally reveals who they are. If we finally do set a boundary with them, it could be too late. They tend to gaslight us or discredit our boundaries. Learning about narcissism is a good way to start recognizing and protecting ourselves from this type of trouble. Now for number five. If you're on disability or receive food stamp assistance, don't let people talk you into buying their food or paying their bills. Be careful of people who only come around during the first of the month when you receive your benefits. One person I spoke with said they had a friend who would put things in their shopping cart without asking or hesitation. If you have a hard time saying no, which I do, it might be a good idea to work on boundaries with your therapist. Moving on to number six, we have to be super careful of people we don't know wanting us to rescue them, especially if we're manic. When we get to this place where we want to start giving away our things, it's also easy to take in someone who's homeless, adopt a new pet, or donate significant funds to a stranger's fundraiser. Maybe let someone borrow money we need for groceries or rent. 
It's easy to believe that we're doing it for the greater good at the time until the mood changes and the bill is due. If it's a major life decision, wait a few days. Run it by a few close friends and see what they think. If the consensus is that it's not a good idea, listen to them. They're your friends after all, and they want what's in your best interest. Number seven, for those of us who experience hypersexuality during periods of mania, we have to be extra vigilant of those looking to exploit us. Sending nudes to a stranger, being coerced into having risky sex or cheating, even our own partners may come to expect sexual performance to be at manic level all the time. Mania can cause us to find ourselves in situations that we normally wouldn't. Number eight, I made a video a long time ago talking about the differences between mania and love. I don't think I've ever gone on a first date when I was depressed. The majority of the time has been when I was hypomanic. That's when my self-esteem is at its highest. It's when I'm way more likely to spend money too. This includes maxing out credit cards or paying for everything, even when my date offered to contribute. You can always rent a helicopter and go swimming with the dolphins on your anniversary. It doesn't have to be on the first date. Number nine, our loved ones might put tremendous pressure on us to talk or explain how we're feeling for their benefit when we're simply not up to the task. When someone who loves us senses that there's something very wrong, not knowing why we feel a certain way might drive them crazy. They might even take our bad mood a little personally, causing them to press us for an explanation. I don't know how or why I often feel the way I do. I just do. It's okay to not be okay, right? For me, it helps if I explain that I don't have a reason why I feel down and that it's not their fault. I'll even do my best to let them know how they can help. It makes a big difference in my own relationship. And number 10, our friends might intentionally or inadvertently take advantage of our manic generosity. One of my patrons summed it up by saying, and I quote, for me, I think my friends just take advantage of the manic side of me or party Marty. They don't even know that I have bipolar just yet, but now that I know, we may all have, shall we say, a simpler summer. No more thousand dollar boat rentals or last minute weekend trips to the mountains in a swanky Airbnb at no cost to others. My spontaneous trips are fun and I always just want to be around friends, but they've learned to just expect that I always want to be the nice guy. I'm learning now that this is more my fault than anyone's and with proper boundaries and communication, I'll no longer be left feeling like I got taken advantage of. I thought that was a great quote. So now for a few closing notes, you guys. One of the big reasons why people take advantage of us is self-interest and dehumanization. A response I found online was talking about how throughout history this has happened to a lot of different groups, including slavery and other inhumane treatments. Some people find it hard to connect with us socially, so they find themselves looking down on those of us with mental illnesses. It's like they see us as less than human. Once they do that, it becomes easy to start manipulating us out of self-interest. They take advantage of us or just be downright mean out of pure dislike of our differences. People tend to dislike others who aren't like them. After all, humans are, for the most part, pack or herd animals. The way we understand ourselves and the world around us is influenced by the group to which we belong in one way or another. People tend to see each other in terms of group allegiances. We draw conclusions about others based on what we think of the group we believe them to belong to. I thought that was a good response to the question of why people take advantage of us. Wow, you guys, we have talked about some really heavy stuff today, so thanks for bearing with me. This was one of the harder topics I've discussed, but an important one. If there's something I missed, please join the conversation in the comments. If your comment is potentially triggering to others, I ask that you put a trigger warning at the beginning of it. Also, if you can include some tips or suggestions to help others, that's what the Polar Warrior community is all about. Thanks for watching. Take extra good care and I'll be back here soon with more Polar Warrior videos. Stay well. Mm -hmm.